Hi everyone, it's Kat here again from Knit Cat Patty Whack. I share easy knitting tutorials for beginner knitters or if you just feel like knitting something easy. If this interests you, please consider subscribing to this channel. I hope you enjoyed my last knit along baby blanket video where I shared an intarsia heart rectangle for you to knit. If you haven't seen that video yet, jump on over and watch it. I'll link it in the description below because I go into a bit more detail about the blanket generally and what yarn and needles and things to use. So this week we're doing another Intarsia stocking stitch pattern for the blanket. It's this little cat square. As you can see in my graphic for the blanket, this is the other picture square that goes on the top row of the blanket. So let's get started on this cat square. I hope that the weird shadows aren't distracting you. I'm filming this at night, so I've got an overhead light and what you can see is the setup that I use to film overhead. So hopefully that's not too distracting for you. So like with the heart square, we'll be using the valuable gradients yarn which comes in a tube of five different colors which go from light to dark um, and because we're doing the top row we're using the darkest shade here which I've called color five and the lighter shade which I've called color one just for ease of explaining and like I said in my last video this is a 10 ply or worsted weight yarn so if you want to substitute, um, consider getting a similar weight yarn. It's also acrylic, which I think is great for baby products because it is machine washable and what mum doesn't want that. So like with our last blanket block, we'll be using four millimeter needles and our tension is the same, which is 19 stitches by 26 rows to 10 centimeter squared in stocking stitch. Other things you'll need, uh, a tapestry needle, scissors, a row counter and for steaming and blocking you might need some pins and a ruler. So here's our chart for the cat. So the white bit is the colour 1 and the dark bit is colour 5. I have a black and white printer so those are my options. I hope that you can see the squares for the white bit. So we'll be following this chart. It's fairly simple. So all of our intarsia squares for this blanket are 32 stitches by 62 rows and it will come out at about 17 centimeters by 24 centimeters. So starting with our first row down here, we'll use our colour 1 and cast on 32 stitches and use the same cast on that you used for the last square, but whatever cast on you like, as long as it's a straight cast on, should be fine. I like the long tail because it's really quick and it's also quite loose so it means we don't get any bunching at the bottom So now that I've cast on my 32 stitches, the chart says our first seven rows are just plain colour one, so no colour work yet.
and if you are quite new to knitting and you're not sure what I mean by stocking stitch in stocking stitch on all of the right side rows so in this case all of the odd numbered rows we are knitting every stitch in the row and for all of the wrong side rows or even numbered rows we are purling every stitch in the row and it's as easy as that Now that I've worked my first seven rows in stocking stitch using just the colour one, I'm ready to start the colour work. So this starts on row eight and because row eight is a wrong side row, we are reading from the left of the page. So on stitch number 24, is when we start with the color five. So as I mentioned in my last video, but I will repeat it just in case you're new to Intarsia or, or picture knitting. In Intarsia, when we change colors, we change to a whole new ball of yarn. So we're going to need our ball of color one, which we already have. So this is the ball of yarn that is attached to the knitting at the moment. We will need a ball for colour 5 and we will need a ball for colour 1 on the other side. For the time being I'm just going to keep these as big balls um, but I will when I get to this bit roll a few butterflies which I demonstrated in my last video but they're basically very small centre pull balls just to make it a bit easier to handle all of the yarn that's going on at the back of the work. So. Row eight, we're going to work stitch 32 to 25 in color one. So that is eight stitches in color one. Now I'm up to stitch number 24 here, so I'm going to switch to my colour 5. Simply leave a tail about 6 inches long, long enough for you to weave in at the end. And we're going to be working 17 stitches in colour 5. And now that I've worked these 17 stitches, we're going to switch back to colour one using a new ball of yarn and just work the last seven stitches of the row. Again, leave a tail long enough to weave in and we're not going to join it to our previous yarn in any way yet. We'll leave that to the weaving in at the end. Okay, so that's our first colour five row done. Now we're up to row nine. 
what we've got here is we've got on the colour 5 starts from stitch 6 all the way up to stitch 24 just to make the little foot there of the cat. As you can probably tell from the name of my blog, I do quite like cats and it's also my name. <laughs> um, but I know that not everybody does. Comment down below if you like cats or if you've got a cat yourself. I grew up with cats but I don't have any pets at all at the moment. Sometimes I miss them but sometimes I think well I don't have to change kitty litter anymore. So we are up to changing colours here. So just as a refresher if you are new to Intarsia or picture knitting, we're taking our previous yarn and putting it over the top of the yarn that we're about to pick up and that means that the two yarns will be sort of uh, twisted around each other at the back. So we make like a nice neat tension between the two colours and it also means there are no gaps which is really important. So we are changing yarns again, so back to our colour 1 and again we'll lay the colour 5 sort of over the top of the colour 1 before we pick up the colour 1 so that they're wrapped around each other. Now these first couple of rows I think are fairly important for your tension. The first couple of rows where you're adding new colours because you want to make sure that you're kind of tugging on all the tails just to make sure that your tension is nice. And so I got I think fairly neat even tension there. And Hopefully I can show you, so you can sort of see here, if I can get it in focus for you, that we've got like the bit of colour 5 here that was wrapped over the colour 1 before I change and you can see that it's sort of very neatly like almost like a stitch at the back of the work so that's one thing I really like about Intarsia is that it looks really neat at the back and you don't have any long strands of yarn sort of hanging out for little fingers to get stuck under. So the next few rows up to the end of row 19 I think are fairly straightforward it's all the same so we have our three different balls of yarn and we change our colours remembering that we are going to lay the previous yarn over the new yarn every time we pick it up so that they're wrapped around each other and that we don't have any big gaps. We'll get a little bit more complicated up here. So I'm going to knit up to the end of row 19 off camera and I'll see you back at row 20. Okay, so I've just finished row 19 here <clears throat> and you can see that I have the little foot of the cat done there, right there. My next step is row 20, which is a wrong side row. And it's where we get this little bit of, well, it's where we start the tail. So we're going to have another section of cream added and another section of brown. So we're going to need a new ball for this colour and a new ball for this colour. Now this section of white I did consider just treating like Fair Isle or Stranded colour work and just carrying the dark brown over. 
but I think that I will do a separate ball uh, just to have a cleaner line on the back. So you'll need um, a butterfly of yarn for this section of colour 5 and this section of colour 1. I did show you how to do a butterfly in my last knit along video with the um, heart square. This is left over from the heart square so that's a really important tip. When you're doing all of these squares you'll have lots of little like scraps of yarn left over from when you finished previous squares. Save them and keep them as butterflies so that you can use them for future squares. But if you missed the heart video, I will just show you how to wrap a butterfly, which is basically a loose center pull ball, which um, is really useful for intarsia knitting. And if you can hear a little voice in the background, that's my daughter, she's playing by herself. <laughs> um, she's got a great imagination. So if you've got little kids, let me know in the comments below what kind of things they like to play with. But my daughter is obsessed with the magic faraway tree and all of her imaginary play at the moment is related to the magic faraway tree and playing with the children and the fairies and all of that stuff. And it's beautiful and very funny. So I will show you how to wrap this butterfly. So you need a length of yarn and the colour you need. So I'm going to wrap this butterfly for this section here. Have a tail, which is going to be the yarn that you'll work from. Get three fingers and wrap your yarn around them. Okay, when you've got most of the yarn that you need wrapped around, take it off your fingers and then wrap the rest of the yarn around the middle loosely so that the yarn will come out really easily. And then when you get to the end, just tuck the little other tail into there to secure it and you'll be knitting from this end. And it's really easy. The yarn comes out really easily, but it, it also keeps it well contained. So you'll need a butterfly in the colour 1 and you also need a butterfly in colour 5 just for this section here. So let's get started. So let's see. Row 20. The first four stitches are in colour 1 and then we've got two in colour five, two in colour one, and then we're doing up to the body of the cat. So let's do that. So we'll start with the yarn that's already attached in colour one. Now what I'm going to do here, you can, you don't have to do it this way. You could carry on with the larger bit of colour 5 if you like for the tail. But because the tail is only a very small amount of yarn, I am going to swap it for the butterfly. So I'll cut this. It just means I need to weave it in when I'm finished, but that's okay. And I'll attach my butterfly and it's just two stitches in colour 5 and now I'll attach my butterfly in colour one and do two stitches in colour one. Okay, now I will grab my 
big ball of color five again and reattach it so that I can finish the body. And I don't need to count the number of stitches because I can see here that the body ends at the same point that it ended on the previous row. So I'll just stop where the dark brown stops from the previous row and switch colours. Okay, so I've stopped where the brown stops in the previous row, which I know is where I stop in this current row. Pick up my colour one from underneath and knit till the end, and that will be my twenty my twentieth row finished. Okay, so that's row 20 done, and so we've got lots of new tails, which are going to be a bit annoying to weave in at the end, but that's just part of Intarsia. So we'll just make sure the tension is not too loose. Looks fairly even on the front. And on to row 21. Now this is going to be much the same, we'll just follow the chart, keeping our separate balls for the tail and for this little section of colour one here. So I've just finished the cat's tail, which was row 34, which means now I'm just going to go back to having three balls of yarn, two colour ones and one colour five, up until we get up to here. So what I'm going to do is I don't need the tails from my, I don't need the balls from our butterflies, so... I'll just cut those now I am going to need them later so once we get up to row 54 we'll be doing the ears of the cat so that means we'll need five balls three color one and two color five so I'll hang on to this one and this one for the middle but for now we're just going to work the head of the cat so we're going from rows 35 up to the end of row 53 
Now, because my big ball of yarn was actually attached to this side, I have cut it and reattached it over here so that I continue, can continue using a big ball of yarn instead of a butterfly for this big section of colour one. I've just finished working row 53 and I'm up to row 54 which is the start of the cat's ears over here. So what that means is I'm going to be needing these two butterflies that I had for the tail. Um, so one for the second ear here and one for the little white bit in the middle. And I can use the yarn that's already attached for this bit here in colour one and this bit here for colour 5. I'm just working the start of the first ear here. And now I need to attach, reattach my butterfly to work this row here, which will be brought up to work this little patch here between the ears. Now I'll add my butterfly from for colour 5 for the second ear. And then starting to work with the yarn which was already attached for the background on the other side. So that's the start of the ears. I'm just going to work off camera up to the end of the ears and I'll see you back at the start of row 59. So our cat's finished. I've just worked the end of row 58 and now what's left to do is just four rows in uh, the colour 1, so that's that cream colour, and then casting off. So that means that the only tail, the only yarn that I need is this one on the end. So everything else can be cut to a manageable length, I say about 6 inches or so, which gives you plenty to um, weave in at the end. And then we don't have any of that stuff hanging around when we're just needing to use one piece of yarn. So let's work our four rows and then cast off.
cast off using whatever method you're comfortable with. I'm just going to do a basic cast off here where I will pass, I will knit a stitch then pass the previous stitch over the top. The only thing to remember is to make sure that your tension is nice and even and not tighter than the knitting so that you have a nice square edge to your blanket block. Now, next step is to weave in all of your ends, checking as you go that the tension is nice and even on the, on the right side. And there you go, our second rectangle for this baby blanket. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Remember that the written pattern is available on my blog and I will link it in the description below. If you'd like to continue following along with this project, please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. I'm really looking forward to working on this blanket together. Bye, happy knitting!